Tonight on Sports Cycling Southland, Chief Executive Nick Jeffrey on the first months on the job and the PowerNet Tour of Southland. Well, Nick, seven months in, the good and the bad of this uh, role for you? Oh, it's been all good, Tom. There's no, been no bad, surely. Uh, oh, well, the first thing I'd say is that it's gone past, you know, so quickly. It's, uh, yeah, it's an incredible place. I think we talked about it at the get-go when, when I was uh, announced in the, in the role and, uh, you know, I'd have to say that it's, uh, you know, it has proved to be um, a really enjoyable time. I think the great thing coming into sport um, from outside sports administration and, and is that you realise that you're dealing with a whole heap of, uh, you know, really passionate people about what they do, you know, a real committed bunch. Uh, and, and I guess a lot of what I'd heard about the organisation in terms of just the fantastic support that, that we receive uh, has, has borne true. So that's uh, that's really heartening and I think hopefully we've been able to make some positive change, uh, you know. Uh, I think the, the great thing is that it was such a solid foundation to build off and that's symptomatic across everything you know we're counting down to the start of the the PowerNet tour for example you know you've got such a great foundation both here at the ILT velodrome and also with events like the tour that all you're trying to do is just naturally embellish what's a you know what's what's great events or great activity now so yeah it's been an it's been an enjoyable time there have been challenges you know uh, what occurred at the at the stadium end of the building if, you know four or five weeks ago I suppose is one of those unquestionably but again from that the, you know there's been some real positives ironically to, to come out of that the way people have worked together and and uh, you know I guess we're, we're um, in it to, to really do a good job across uh, for the community with uh, with the rebuild of the stadium so yeah not without its uh, fair share of challenges but uh, but been good fun yeah. I suppose the impact for you is a little indirect because uh, your little haven here was safe uh, but now you've got crowds wanting to share it. I don't know if you can pick up the noise in the background <laughs> here but I think it's fantastic you know we've got we've got uh, the end of the mini ball basketball going right now which is great yeah I mean it's look it's going to put a bit of pressure on down this end of the building uh, and you know I've, I've uh, I think it's fair to say that it's it's quite easy for all of the all of the sports and organisations to get nice and close together to start the, the challenge and the difficulty and, and I know the stadium are, are living this on a daily basis is trying to make all the pieces of the puzzle fit and that's not going to be easy because there will be people that will miss out you know and it will have an impact from a cycling point of view on availability too you know but uh, but you know we I know the good thing is everyone's got a tremendous amount of goodwill everyone's working and uh, you know to to ensure that uh, that you know any um, impact is minimal uh, so uh, so yeah let's hope that, uh, that that is the case and plus you know it'd be quite a good view from up here for the steel and sharks games in the middle of the velodrome too just quietly one of the potential challenges was the rate of growth for cycling especially since the velodrome uh, existed H have you seen some some challenges in that area well i think we're just scratching the surface to be honest, would be my reading of it. Just huge potential, you know. It's such a such a great sport and such a great recreation activity, you know. And there's a, there's been a bit made of the of the of the growth of the sport, and you know, um, you quite rightly pointed that out as being one of the challenges to make sure that there weren't too many growing pains. And I think that's probably what we're living now. You know, I, I it's almost the my, my seven months have kind of been a seven months of two halves. First lot was actually just sitting down talking to a lot of people, getting a sense for the organisation, um, and and then hopefully making, as I said, some some positive change you know off a really solid foundation uh, but you do reach that point and, and this is sport across the board really where you tap out uh, you know you, you reach full potential from from both a human point of view and obviously from a financial point of view and I suppose the only frustration that I've had is that there's so much we could end up doing some of this you've got to be strategic about saying well that goes into next year's plan or heaven forbid the year after because the danger is there's so much that we could do that we end up doing a lot of stuff semi well rather than doing you know making some some um, some good steps you know and, and to some key things off so I suppose that's the balance that we're trying to find as an organisation uh, organisation as well but look it's, it's uh, as I say that we're just getting started really it's it's uh, it's got huge potential so where is the growth coming from is it coming from schools from corporate or just from every corner well I think we could we could actually tick all of those boxes to be honest I think particularly our focus is we've done a lot of work in trying to um, in trying to bring juniors up through the ranks uh, and, and a school based program which we're looking at rolling out um, in, in 2011 I think is going to be a big part of that first job that, that uh, I did when I came in here was to employ a development officer uh, and we've got Matt Archibald now who's been up and going for a few months and doing really great work with uh, the kids uh, bringing them up through the ranks you you know, and if I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. Uh, you know, to, to people around the organisation, it's all about pathways. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds a bit grippy, and it's one of those new age terms. But I think it's really important for anyone at whatever level, and it's not just about juniors who comes into our organisation. There has to be a nice, easy step for them to actually, uh, I guess, you know, continue to grow. You know, as a cyclist, and whether it's at a recreational level or a high performance level, and everywhere in between. So, so that's uh, that's been where a lot of the focus has been. So certainly, schools, you know. 
I'd, I'd say particularly with a facility like we've got here at the ILT Velodrome, uh, the reality is every school has a first 15, uh, has a senior A netball team, has a first 11 cricket side, every single school in Southland. Well, naturally I'd say this, but it should have a senior cycling team as well. Because, you know, you get you do tend to get a bit blasé about the facility you've got. I'm lucky enough to walk in here every day and go, man, this is world class, and it really is. This facility just blows me away every day. Uh, so so that, you know, along with a, a really intensive road program as well, I think, um, you know, really, really does mean that, you know, cycling continues to grow. Corporate market, same deal. You know, such a such a huge uh, area for us. With on the back of the Harris Group corporate pursuit we run every year as well. Uh, so there's chances to, to grow that area. And of course, it's blokes like you and me. You know, it's the it's the mammals, which is my favourite acronym: middle-aged men in lycra. Uh, and, and that's the biggest growth area for the sport, you know, nationwide. And I think the stats are something like 65% of cyclists are 35 years of age or over. So just a huge, um, just a just a huge portion of the of the cycling community. And even though middle-aged men in lycra is not a great mental picture. Um, the, the the reality is is that uh, it's a key market. You know that that masters men and women category. You know so uh, so it's all of the above, mate. It's all of the above. So as a man, well, have you been on the track? Because I think on the last bait you hadn't had a spin. Well, I'm still trying. I'm still debating whether 35 is middle aged, mate. To be fair, but uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm I've actually officially become a master cyclist, which is a bit worrying. 35 years of age is the cutoff. I have had a go, yeah. And and look, it's and that's the thing, I suppose. It's been useful coming in as a non cyclist mm. into the sport because what it's actually shown is that. Uh, we need to do a better job of making it easy for people to get started and to grow, you know, and, and pathways, you know. So, so, uh, so yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's, it's one of those, certainly on a track, it's one of those exhilarating experiences that you, you, you have a crack at and you get off and you go, that was outstanding, give me another go. Uh, and I think that's the thing. If, if you looked at the Southland um, population, uh, whether they're cyclists or not, you know, how many would have actually had a go out in the velodrome? A small minority, to be honest, if you were being blunt about it. So, the the great thing about this facility is that it's the most accessible velodrome in the world, and that's good. But it's not enough because we can do a better job about finding ways to get people in here and enjoying it because it is a community facility. Uh, and then you've got the road, you know, which is, to be honest, more accessible probably than the track. You know, it's a bit intimidating getting out on the boards out there, but but certainly that whole recreational element is a is a, a real focus for us as well. Finding those people that that go out on rides themselves and finding them nice and safe and easy ways to actually start off within under our auspices. They don't have to race, they just have to get out there and be taught how to actually do it properly and then if they so wish they can develop into, into uh, taking part in our club activities on the weekends. So yeah, all of that sort of stuff and I've had a go at both, although as you can probably tell from my waistline I need to do a wee bit more. <laughs> All right, uh, it's a change of tack for you next week because previously you've looked at the Power Net Tour of Southland from a media point of view and now you're looking at it from a responsibility point of view. How does it look from that angle? Uh, it's Bruce Ross's baby. That's, no, yeah, well, it is actually, to be fair. Yeah, I, th I think, again, it's shown uh, just what a... M and I suppose it has been a bit of an eye-opener for me, to be honest, about just what a major logistical undertaking it is to deliver this. And you'll know it, you know, your organisation does such a great job for us from a, from a TV and coverage point of view. You'll know what a major undertaking it is for you guys. And it's, uh, I guess, the same, especially now when you look at running public events. You know, the amount of legalese and paperwork and compliance that you've got to tick off to actually literally be able to get to the start line is incredible. Uh, so look, I've just got nothing but admiration for Bruce and his team. They, they do a fantastic job, they really do. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it, you know, because it, when I when I suppose I took this job um, seven months ago, it was this week that's coming with the Pownet Tour that I was really looking forward to being a part of, you know. And, uh, you know, to have been behind the scenes, I guess, helping in some small way, hopefully, to, uh, to put on a great event uh, has been really enjoyable. But, it, you know, it, it, it's the week that we're all looking forward to now. Mm. Yeah, it's changed classification, a lot of publicity about that early in the year, but it doesn't seem to have um, detracted from the quality of the field that we've got today. Well, I think it's the great thing, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, that was our hope and, and uh, the, the reality of how we saw the situation at the time. And, and now we're going to, you know, have an event which, uh, you know, lines up Greg Henderson and Hayden Ralston from a, from a pro tour rider's point of view. So, you know, we've been able to get those two thanks to, you know, the great you know, cumulative work of Calder Stewart, um, along with Bike NZ, to be able to get both of those guys riding. I think that's great. Uh, but it's not just about those two, you know, as well. You know, you've 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 got uh, I think five of the seven from the Commonwealth Games uh, road racing team, and what a spectacular effort that was from the New Zealand side in Delhi. Uh, you know, and to have most of those guys, uh, you know, lining up at the start line: McCauley, Jack Bauer, uh, Clinton Avery. You know, and then there's a whole heap of other storylines that go with it uh, too. So yeah, it's a really quality field, which is great. Uh, and there's a bloke Landis as well, which there's been a wee bit of talk about too, lining up. So uh, plenty of storylines to follow, and it's just going to be fantastic to uh, to see how it goes.
Don't forget to tune into Q at 9.30pm each night for extensive tour coverage, and that's repeated at 7.30 the next morning. The Powernet Tour of Southland. Powering to a town near you. Connecting the South.